Pastify is an efficient web framework for Node.js with a low overhead and a powerful plugin architecture. It's inspired by popular frameworks like Express and Happy.js. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple application including a basic RESTful API, how to work with the schemas, login, and error management. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, and let's get to it. Okay, let's get started by creating a new directory. Let's call it Fastify API. Let's enter to that directory. Okay, now let's initialize a new node project. So this is npm init. And now let's install Fastify. So this is npm install Fastify. Okay, now that we installed Fastify, we are going to start Nodemon. Nodemon is going to watch for changes in the code and it's going to restart the server every time that we make a change in the code. So this is npm install globally and this is nodemon. Okay, now let's open Visual Studio Code and let's create a new file. Let's call it server.js and now let's go to the package.json file and let's add a couple of scripts here that will allow us to run the server. So this is server.js and here first I'm going to add a new script for development. So this is dev and here I'm going to use nodemon. This script will be nodemon server.js. So every time that we make a code change, it's going to restart the server. And another script will be start and this command is going to run node server.js so this is going to start the server in production mode let's say now let's work on our server file and first we need to import the fastify library so this is const fastify require fastify we're going to initialize an instance of fastify and we're going to pass a property here that is the logger property as true and now i'm going to create a function to actually start the server const start and here i'm going to add an arrow function and this will be await fastify dot listen and i'm going to pass the port let's say 3000 and I'm going to wrap this with a try catch just in case we get any errors so this is try I'm going to move this here and in case we get any errors I'm going to use the fastify log this will be fastify dot log dot error and i'm going to log the error from the catch sentence and i'm going to finish the process so this is process dot exit and i'm going to pass one here and with this code we are basically saying that we are finishing the process with an error and here i'm going to call this function to actually start the server and here I forgot to add async because we are using await here. And now let's add a simple get endpoint to our application. So this is fastify.get and the first parameter will be the route or the resource. So let's say that we have an API of messages. So this will be messages. And we are going to also pass the handler here. So this will be an arrow function it's going to be async and it's going to receive two parameters the request and the response so this is request and reply okay this will be an arrow function and here we are going to return an object so let's add a property let's say message 
and this will be hello world. Okay, now I'm going to start the server. So this is npm run dev. So I'm going to use Nodemon here. Okay, now let's make our first request to this endpoint using Postman. So here, this will be a get request. So this is localhost. The port is 3000. And the endpoint is messages. So I'm going to send a request to this URL. And we get the response. That is this object that we are returning here. And if we go to the console here, we're going to see that we have additional login details of the request and the response. And this is because we enable the login here. Okay, now let's say that we want to get a message by ID. So we can do something like this. I'm going to copy this. And here we can pass the identifier. This is colon ID. And if we want to access the identifier that we receive as part of the URL, we can do something like this. Const ID equals to request dot params dot ID. And I'm just going to return that ID here with this object. Okay, now let's go to Postman and let's pass an identifier. Let's say one, two, three, and let's run the request. And as we can see here, we get the identifier that we passed and the message that we are returning here. Okay, now let's add a post endpoint to our API. I'm going to copy this. And this will be post. Okay, and here I'm going to access the body of the request. This is cons. And let's say that we are going to pass a message property as the body of the request. So this will be message equals to request dot body dot message. And here I'm just going to show what I receive in the request. Okay, let's go to Postman. And here I'm going to pass a JSON object. I'm just going to pass the message. And I'm going to change the value, let's say test. And this would be a post request. I'm going to remove this parameter. Okay, now let's run the post request. And as we can see here, we are returning the message that we sent here. And here we are basically reading the message property that we are sending as part of the body of the request. Okay, now let's work with schemas. With schemas, we can assign types to the request, the response, the query string, the body of the request. So I'm going to create a new file. This will be schema.js. And here we are going to define the JSON schema. For example, let's create the JSON schema of this response. So this will be const get message. And here we're going to set the JSON schema of the response for this endpoint. So we are going to return an identifier. This will be an integer and a message that will be a string. So response And here again, I specify the schema for different HTTP codes. For example, for 200, this is a successful response. I'm going to return an object. So this is type. And this is object. And this object is going to have two properties. an ID and the type of this ID will be an integer and the other property will be a message and in this case the type will be a string okay let's go back to the endpoint and here we can also associate the JSON schema to the query string. So here after the response, we can add query string. And here we can add the property that will be ID and the type of the ID 
will be an integer. Okay, now I need to export this definition from this module. So this module dot exports. And here I'm going to add that constant that is get message. Okay, I'm going to import the schema. So this is const schemas equals to require. And this is schema. Okay, now I'm going to associate the schema to the endpoint. So I'm going to pass an object. This is a schema. And this is schemas.getMessage. And for example, if I add any property in the response, let's say test, test. And if I call this endpoint, let's go to Postman. This will be a get request. I'm going to pass a parameter, one, two, three. And if I click on send, the response is going to ignore that property. So if I go to the schema, and if I add that property here, let's say test, and the type for this property will be string. And now if I go to Postman, and if I run this request again, now, I get the new property that is part of the schema. So let's say that I pass a string instead of an integer. So I pass A, B, C here, and I run this request. So as you can see here, it's going to ignore the property because it's not an integer. Okay, so now let's add another schema to validate the body of the request that we receive in this post endpoint. So let's go to the schema file and I'm going to add a new constant, const create message. And this will be the body of the post request. So this is body. And the type of the body will be an object. And here we're going to set the properties of this object. We're going to keep it simple. We are just going to add one property. That would be the message. And the type of the message would be a string. And we're going to make this property required. So this is required. And this is an array with the properties that are actually required. So this is message. And I have to export this constant so that I can use it from the server. Okay, and here I'm going to associate the schema. So this is an object with the property schema. And this is schemas.create message. Okay, let's go to Postman and let's execute a post request. So let's change the uh, property of this body. So let's say message two. And if I send this request, and here I'm gonna get this 400 error, a bad request error, because the body should have required property message. Now, if we pass the message property, it's going to work just fine. And here we can also handle validation errors. So here we need to pass attach validation as true. And here we can add an if sentence. So if request dot validation error, then we can send a response back to the client reply dot code let's say 422 this is the HTTP code for for an unprocessable entity basically there's a problem with the syntax of the entity that we are sending in the request and then we send back a message to the client this is another way to send a response back to the client besides 
using the return here. And here we are just going to return this validation error. Let's go back to Postman and let's run this request again. As we can see here, we get this HTTP code, error unprocessable entity, but it should have required property message. We can also send any other error code here. We can say there was an error in the body of the request, for example. And if we run this again, we're gonna get that string as the response with the HTTP code 422. And another thing that we can do in Fastify is assigning a global error handler. So instead of handling this validation here, we can do something globally. So I'm going to remove this and I'm just going to comment this. And here I'm going to add my error handler. So this is fastify dot set error handler. And this will be an error function. That is going to receive three parameters, the error, the request, and the response. And here I can handle the error. So we can add if error dot validation. I can return the status code, the same that we used before, 4.2.2, unprocessable entity. And we can send a response back to the client. We can send a new error. Let's say new error. And here we can pass a message. Let's say validation failed. Okay, now let's go to Postman and let's send again this wrong property. So I'm going to click on send. And as we can see here, we get the status code, we get the error, unpressable entity, and we get the message that the validation has failed. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.